Hey, Carm Capriato here, and I'm with Kevin Fitzpatrick, Steve Zack, and Matt Fonslow as we discuss a few hot trending topics that we recorded at the TST Big Event in spring 2019. I know you'll like this. Here's a taste. As technicians, we've all had an incident where we're trying to thread a bolt for an hour and a half. And then we'll say, can't do it. Another technician will walk over, and in two seconds, he'll put his hand up there, and he'll have that, he'll have that bolt threaded. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hey, Carm Capriato here. Now, did you know that some of the very best shop owner and technician training takes place at Apex? Well, you do now. Plan to be there November 5th through the 7th at the Sands Expo in Las Vegas. Registration is open. For information, visit aapexshow.com. I hope to see you there. Welcome to Remarkable Results Radio. Glad to have you here. Now, we improve your success pathway with conversations worth hearing. Listen to learn just one thing. You get that. And don't forget, the industry's premier podcast has our own listening app. Find it on your app store for iOS and Android. Just key in Remarkable Results Radio in the app on the smart device. All the episodes will be right there at your fingertips. Invest in you. Subscribe to the podcast. So who is with me today? I'm with Kevin Fitzpatrick, Vice President, AutoLogic, Stephen Zack, Automotive Technical Instructor for Bosch, and Matt Fonslow, Shop Manager, Diagnostician of Riverside Auto Repair. Our episode today reiterates the importance of training. We get into the challenges that exist for ADES calibration. We talk about adapting to tech changes and what it takes Steve to create a class. Hey, you'll like the flow of ideas and the frank discussion, including a segment on being on the couch. I know you'll be able to relate to that. Hello, welcome everyone. I'm at TST here in uh, just a little north of New York City at the TST Big Event. Uh, a great turnout, 678 technicians, shop owners in the big ballroom getting training. In fact, I think right now John Thornton's up on stage, and I was kind enough uh, to be able to get, and Matt, thanks for re, uh, going out while I was busy doing some other things, getting Kevin Fitzpatrick from Autologic, Vice President of uh, Autologic Diagnostics. Big job. Great to be here, actually. Thank you. And great company. Steve Zach's with us from Bosch. Hi, Steve. Hey, how are you? You are the automotive technical instructor, and I saw you do your thing a few years back and in Detroit when you guys were announcing or showing ADIS calibration. Yeah, that was a blast. I had a good time. Wasn't it? That. It was yep. raining. We were under tents. Yeah. And you said, now, uh, please don't pay attention to the distance and the length. And the, you know, <laughs> this has to be in a pristine shop. And that demonstration opened my eyes to the challenges that ADIS was going to be for our industry. Correct. And it's going to keep growing and growing, and there's going to be a lot more equipment involved. And what's really good is it, it's, it's an easy-to-do calibration, but you do need training. It's sure. not something you can just arbitrarily do for the hell of it. You don't walk in and just decide that you're going to do it. Right. You've got to follow the service specs, am I right? Right. You have to follow all the procedures, yeah. and you have to use the exact specifications the OE give you. And that's the main thing. There's two types of calibration. There's what's called dynamic, where I can drive it on the road. But then there's what's called static, where I've got to use a set of targets, and they have to be set to a complete specification to the OEM spec. Are shops that are going to do ADES calibration growing? Right now, it's, it's still a virgining market. It's just coming out. So you're starting to see people get into it and get involved. The dealers are getting involved. Many of them weren't even involved in it. They would bring the car in and they kind of push it away. But now people are starting to realize it has to be done. You've got a camera, you've got radar, you have LIDAR, and each one needs a specific type of calibration. You can no longer just let the car go. You have to calibrate it. It's going to pull to the left, to the right, or it may not stop when it's supposed to or slow down. It's just supposed to with cruise control. I know there's an awful lot of mobile diagnosticians that have invested and they have this and they're going out, but will every shop allow ADIS calibration to work? The challenge is that they could walk in and say, can't do it here. Yeah. Right? They need a specific length bay. Got it. 
Yeah, there's a certain footprint that the, the shop needs in order in order to do it. And um, again, the, the sunlight can affect it. So sometimes you can't do it. You can't do it outdoors. You need to. So there are there are certain requirements the shop the shop needs in order to get involved in ADOS. We're looking. We don't want shops to, to really jump into it thinking that this is hey this is a profit center that I can do. It's not like aiming headlights at this point. This is you know so we don't you know shops shouldn't jump into it and say hey this is something I can sell to my customers at this point. Auto Logic have equipment to do this? We do not right at this point. No, but we are engaging it. We 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 are we do have a um, a product in the in the in the crash industry in the for pre and post scan. Um, we we have a technical support center that we just built in Huntington Beach, California. Um, we're actually using botch targeting systems actually, and we are um, we're using those systems now as we're learning um, learning more and more about about ADOS. We're doing about eight or ten a day in our in our um, our training center out out in Huntington Beach. Before I introduce uh, my third guest here, I'll never forget when we were out there, someone asked you the question, Steve, how much is this going to cost? And you said, we don't even have a part number. <laughs> have you released something? No, we're still working on a product. We should have something released shortly. We have pieces out now, um, of course, to the OEMs and out to one of our large customer branches that is an OE. And you'll like the flow but of ideas. Nothing for the aftermarket yet. It's coming. Including it's amazing what it takes to launch something, huh? Correct. Wow. A lot of, a lot of testing, to just as, he's, as Kevin said, a lot the of proof of testing as well as making sure that you meet the OE spec and the sure. OE of the great I can only can imagine what Bosch, those key talking points German company, right? Page. Yes. Boy, I guess can you imagine how strict those rules would be? At remarkable results right We live by A great answer. The perfect answer. Matt Fonslo is here. From Riverside Automotive in Red Wing, Minnesota. You're not doing any training here, but you're hanging out at the AES Wave booth, huh? I am. Bringing up the rear for this uh, podcast. If you were a a technician here uh, at at the meeting in between the breaks, would you encourage them to go out and walk the show floor? Please don't ignore the vendors. I mean, they, they really help defer the cost so that it's really a low-cost all-day seminar. What kind of advice would you give to anyone going to a seminar? Well, yeah, there's multiple reasons why. One you just brought up, these are the guys paying for it. Yeah. They, they really are. The, they pay for that space to be able to display their products and talk to you about their products. I think we owe them, uh, you know, some of our time and legitimate time, not just show up and listen to them. And, not a wave, a wave by. Yeah, 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 not a flyby, but, yeah, yeah. you know, give them an opportunity to explain what they have and how it can help you because that's really why they're here, right, to help you easy to walk through the trade show and focus on the new shiny thing you know what's new what's uh what's coming you should also stop at those booths and spend some time with the vendors of the products you already own because there's further training involved than just sitting in the classroom there's training involved in the booth i already have this scan tool i got two scan uh scan tool vendors it's here. like what else can it do right yeah and you can bring up a complaint like guy oh, you know i was trying to do this and look at this and I can't, so I went and got this other one, and it did it. And then they go, I'm like, well, no, no, our tool will do this. Let me show you how. And then you're sitting there going, oh. Because who reads the instructions? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right? Well, you open you open the box, and it's supposed to work. Yeah. And some of the stuff that we're talking about, it's almost like an owner's manual for a vehicle. It's so extensive what the tools can do. And it's not just the tool itself, what that tool does on that specific vehicle or platform. It varies. So it's, it would be very difficult for them to have a really, really robust uh, user's manual. But like I said, at the booth, you can learn how to do this, how to do that. Oh, you know, I was trying to graph this. I couldn't graph it. Oh, let me show you. Oh, this thing graphs. That graphs better than the tool I went right, and got. Right, to, right. You know, so I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase something I just said a moment ago. I opened up the box. And, uh, it's supposed, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't seem to work, but it, the, the, what I should have said, it doesn't work the way I want it to. And I think we get stuck with that. Oh my God. I, you, there's every tool has different uniquenesses built into them. And sometimes you got to go get a little deeper to get it to do what you want to do. Or am I right, Kevin? Yeah. Well, again, I'll, I'll use a term that, uh, I learned years and years ago on a, on a fluke meter that I got. Again, I'm going back. Probably twenty years. Buttonology. They had buttonology was one of the terms that they used. Buttonology. Buttonology. Right, because yeah. they had these soft keys and and hard keys and and you had to learn. It was it was like I, I it was like playing a piano almost using using this tool. And yet it, the the learning curve was was quite steep. 
And and what I think an important point that has to be made is the the vendors and the people that are in the in the tool and equipment industry, they're not on the outside selling tools into these shops. They're very much they're highly engaged mm-hmm. in this industry. They're they're inside the industry selling tools. You know what I mean? Two shops. Let me uh, l- let me take this opportunity to ask: Where does AutoLogic get some of? The ideas and the enhancements in the tools, do you, do you really bring the techs in and sit down with them and spend a day with them and maybe watch them through a glass or something? Well, we, we have about 100. We have um, one of our main deliverables is our technical support. So we've got about 100 master technicians presently on on, on staff that wow. we hire. Um, and we're growing. We're growing constantly. That's huge. Um, from my own from my own personal standpoint, I still own a repair shop today. It happens to be a Bosch Service Center, so it's my second Bosch shout out today. Highly, highly engaged in the industry. Steve, you owe him twenty bucks. Yeah. So again, <laughs> we're you know again, I start my day, I start my morning every day in my repair shop. You know, okay. I get up, I get up early, um, I go meet my brother, and I start my day in my repair shop. So again, as far as where do our where do our you know where do we find the answers to our questions? Yeah. Uh, in the service bank. In the real world. What are the, what are the issues that the, that the techs are having? We talk, we're engaging from, from our technical support centers at AutoLogic. We engage with technicians. We have about a thousand touch points per day with technicians in, in repair shops. What are the issues? What problems are you having? And, and those, and that, that's what finds its way into our, into and our. It's being recorded in a database and you're all figuring out what it means when you come up with version two or the evolution of a new correct. product. Right. We have, we call it, um, you know, oftentimes we'll have a, we'll have a customer or a, a shop. We call it, you know, we, we need to get this technician on the couch where he's really stressing out. I mean, he's had this car for a while and we have, a, we'll have to have, we'll have to engage with him. And on really, the couch. I mean, you really got to help him. Right. He needs a therapist. We have to calm him down right. and we have to have, we have to engage with him. We have to have a couple of, couple of our support technicians really calm him down and kind of go through, go through with him. And, and, and that's, and out of those, out of those interactions, Come, come ideas and come, yeah, yeah. come service fixes for for our software and and for for our products. You know what? He just said a mouthful. Yeah. How, how many people need to go on the couch every day in our industry? <laughs> yeah. How many huh? techs are there? Wait a minute, man. How, how many times yeah. if you could have said, you know, you're going, you're just you're, you're you're hitting your head against the wall. All of a sudden, you come home, you got somebody says, what what happened? Your your forehead is bleeding. I was hitting myself against the wall. And, and a lot of times that phone call or the interface through the tool, right? That's correct. A lot of times that is just another perspective. Somebody else looking at the problem, maybe another it's sitting right there in front of you, yeah. and you get somebody else looks at it and goes, oh, hey, you know what? I don't like this. And then you look at it and you slap yourself on the forehead, yeah. giving yourself a bruise around the cut from banging your head against the I, hood. I, I, as technicians, we've all had an incident where we're trying to thread a bolt for an hour and a half. And then we'll say, can't do it. Another technician will walk over, and in two seconds, he'll put his hand up there, and he'll have that, he'll have that bolt threaded. It's the walk-away theory. Right. Yeah. He's, no, he's no better than us. He just it took a different perspective. It took, in yep. this one case, it took a different pair of hands. Yep, a different set of eyes. That's all. That's correct. Hey, Carm here. Now, you know I attend Apex in Las Vegas each year. It's my must-attend show for one simple reason. It keeps me up to date on everything in the global automotive aftermarket industry. At Apex, I see, touch, and compare the latest new tools and equipment in the industry. I learn how new technology is affecting independent repair shops. I sit in on advanced training sessions on underhood service and alternative fuel vehicles. And so important, I network with others facing the same opportunities and challenges. I know many of you are shop owners, managers, or technicians. I also know Going to Apex means time away from your business. But I simply don't know how you can stay ahead of the huge transformation and changes taking place in the industry without attending Apex. Hey, make Apex your must-attend show. The dates are Tuesday, November 5th through Thursday, November 7th at the Sands Expo in Las Vegas. Registration, it's only $40, and it only takes a few minutes. Go to aapexshow.com. Steve, tell me your background uh, to get where you did. I started out working for my grandparents and my parents in a small nursery. We had a garage there, and then from the, you know, at age eleven, yeah. working on all the equipment. From there, I went to automotive school and became an auto mechanic at a Datsun dealer. Nobody's that Whoa. old in this room. <laughs> Wait a minute, no, that that doesn't age you at all. Yeah, <laughs> and then just progressed from there. I went to Ingersoll Rand, working on big engines, bigger than this building. Yeah. To eventually, back to Chrysler, and Bosch picked me up from there. 
I've been with Bosch 27 years wow. as a tech instructor. You're, you're an icon. I mean, uh, you know, I guess because I, I watched you do your thing. You were so uh, comfortable. You were you, you just had a great style to you, your, your training style when, when I when I saw Thank you. you. Yeah. I owe a lot of that to that gentleman over there that's watching us, Justin. He's kind of my guy to go to to say, what do I need to change? You know, well, that's good. You, you know, we all need we all need someone to whisper in our ear. But, you know, there's there's nice ways to say you may be rough around your edges. You know, I, I think it goes back to we talk a lot about leadership on the show and, uh, you know, that personal introspective to figure out a- adding value to other people's lives. And sometimes when you figure out what that is, you c- you have a completely different way right. to broadcast uh, your message yeah. so that it sticks and it gets out there and there's knowledge transfer. We don't have another microphone for you. Justin, your job is PR and marketing. Public relations marketing. Public relations marketing. Internal wow. And, and you have something to do with the training department? He's hands on. Wow. How cool is that? Interesting. It's, it's interesting. He's, he, you, you sit there and you think he's the paper pusher. No, he can do it with his hands too. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's learned cool. a lot. And cool. He's helped a lot. Kevin, what are you guys working on? Anything exciting? Oh, well, plenty of things. You're going to see a couple of things come out with our tools. Again, we're, we're trying to find new and better ways to engage with our, our technical support guys through our devices and, and get that information out to the shops. So, you know, the more the more information we can grab from the customers in the service bay back out back out to our support centers. So that, that kind of connectivity, that's, that's some of the main stuff that we're working on right now. Let's go back to that 100 um, team, support team. Right. What are they telling you that the technicians need? Oh, 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 plenty right now. I mean, right now, the main thing that these technicians need is our, our training. And it's something, it's something that we... But, but specific, um, uh, leader-led, online, uh, hands-on? Um, the, the, the whole idea of um, leader-led training, meaning in, in, in actually out, out in, a, in, a, in a hotel room, yep. I, my, this is my personal opinion. Yeah. Again, there, it may differ from from others in the room. Um, I think that's kind of the, those those lines are kind of blurring. I think some of the stuff that's being delivered um, virtually on online is absolutely fabulous today. I think some so I think that you know for a technician, especially with the the time pressures that these guys have, to be able to go home, you know what I mean, put the kids to bed and spend thirty five or forty minutes online learning something going back and putting it to use um the next day is absolutely so you're valuable. saying what whatever we heard this morning and whatever they're hearing this afternoon can be duplicated online in, in in many in many respects at my own pace in my sweatpants at home at night after the kids go to bed invest i mean okay we could we could watch tv and ruin our minds and watch 20 minutes of commercials every hour or we can spend 40 minutes in you know, and, and get a great class. Pick pick a module, pick an electronics module, pick something on CAN bus, pick something, but learn something and, and take it to take it to work the next day and, and Or you use. bring your lunch to work and you got a half an hour, you got an hour. Watch a YouTube sit video. Sit down and yeah. watch those videos put on by these um yeah. vendors by, or manufacturers. By the way, last week uh last last week's Town Hall Academy when I had um Bob Pattengale, John Foro and Ryan Coyman on when I asked Ryan Coyman about basic electricity, and everybody chimed in. Oh, my God, it's the most important thing anyone can take over and over again every couple of years. But his challenge was is to have a, even if it's a, a basic electric for the advanced technician, whatever title you'd want to put on the training, he says the ego of the uh, well-established technician to show up at that class and go through it gets in the way. And he said, so... If they can do it at home <laughs> under the right. cover of darkness, they'll take the class right. because they know they need it. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's monitoring them. Nobody can see them. They, they'll they take that class. They'll enjoy yeah. it. And they'll watch it over and over yes. and over again. I do that. You know, I have to write classes. Yeah. And I do all my research and I'll find a video and it drives me to look for more material to write another class. Interesting. You write your own classes. Yeah, that's Part of my job, I write most of the classes. And, and my counter, counterpart, Doc Watson, yeah. who is really great at... Uh, Audio and video, he's just a phenomenal speaker, and he does a lot of our videos. We have, I don't know how many YouTube videos, well into the 3,000 range, I believe. Well, what's it take to write a class? I mean, you, you told me research, but how do, can you tell me how it comes together? Well, you, you, if you, you get the subject material that they want. So the first one, let's say, for example, volumetric efficiency. Now I've got to go ahead and figure out how do I create 
a calculator. I had to create my own calculator. Um, six months worth of work just to create that. And then to write the training class, I got to take it to different levels. I got to take it to Kevin's level. And I don't know your level, but I'm just using that as a thought process. And then Matt's level. So I got one guy that may be up here, one guy that may be down here, and I got to bring it all together. So the one class covers all the levels. Correct. Got it. And we started out originally teaching to a college professor's level, and we were way up because that's what our competitor asked for. You know, it was Bosch sponsored, uh, another competitor sponsored, Bosch complied, and we put this class together. There were 20 college professors, 10 understood, 10 were asleep. So you have to realize, you know, you, you try it out and you realize, ah, I went too far. So you bring it back down. And okay. You got to take it to the technician's level. Yeah, right, right, right. Not every technician can, can physically, um, you know, understand math. So you take it to the next level. Right. So you write it, you test it, and then you create the video for it from uh, there. Got it. And we created the video, and the video was based on, um, you know, taking the car on the road test in this particular case, then taking the data, showing him how to input the data into the website, and then from there, showing him how to use this GAN tools data stream to diagnose the problem. And it was a 13 minute video, and it's what I believe, I think it's 35,000 people that have looked at it. I don't know, Justin would have to answer that. Well, that's a good number. Yeah, yeah. it's not our. It's not not number, nearly enough. Yes, you know, I kind of want to. I kind of want to pick on some of the verbiage. That we use as an industry, basic electricity. Well, that's a, just a horrible title, mm -hmm. and it's because we use it all the time. We've instead of using a word like fundamental. How about principles of? Well, or, yeah. yeah, principles are fundamental because fundamental we still equate with basic, but it has nothing to do with basic. Basic we demote it down to. Basic is, is to plugging easy. it in the wall. Yeah, this is a child could do this, a caveman could do this. Right. But okay. electricity is far, far from simple. Yeah. Right. There's nothing that you interact with daily that behaves like electricity. But now because we keep labeling it basic, 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 nobody wants to take it because now it's this ego thing mm -hmm. rather than if it was marketed more like fundamentals yeah. and maybe principles is better to yeah. get away from fundamentals because yeah. we mistakenly equate fundamental with basic. Or maybe physics of electricity. Right. Yeah. Well, that's all like right. that. It is physics. Like that. Yeah. yeah, it is. And yeah. you could make it as complex as you wanted, but really you could go over the ways to apply this real world in the shop is what's important. We wouldn't even have to get into like the physics, but I, I like the title. That would help drive more techs to go take those electrical classes that they need. Right. They absolutely need. If you create how electricity works and how it flows and how it's created and you show them the physics in a simple format suddenly they can vision that on that wire as they're testing and they know what they're looking for and now all of a sudden the voltage stopped it's no longer going anywhere so i got an open circuit they understand what an open circuit means because they understand the physics behind it if you just give it to them a nice simple format and the word simple really isn't right either because it's you know you've got to use things that are not ego breaking but i think it fits and even if someone could argue the specifics of what we're using is a simplified model of what electricity is doing. It's still very applicable in the Bay. Therefore, I'm not trying to teach you to be a, you know, engineer or work at CERN. I, yeah. You're trying to fix taillights. Yeah, but, but once, once you can fix those taillights, you can figure out an issue with a serial data connection and, and everything right. else. It's, yes. it's, it's, it all stems from that. And, we were in a situation recently where we were hiring a technician, and my brother says, well, you know, I said, listen, I drew him out a very basic electrical diagram, a current flow diagram. I said, show him this. I said, and I go, if you can, if you can answer these three basic questions, I said, you're about 90% there. That's not such a bad deal. I mean, no, that's not like such it. a bad practice yeah. did either. You, did you hire him? No, well, we again. He, he's he's still with, with the search continues okay. because again we can. It's uh, the, the the technician shortage is that's another show. Yeah. I'm sure. It is, it is. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah we, we we've done a ton of them on yeah. that. But uh, but Kevin, was the guy able to answer the three questions? Yeah, we've he's got right. he's got okay. He's so he a, qualifies. Yeah, he does. he made the short list. That's, yeah, that's a that's a cool that's a cool idea. Well, it's a good yeah, and it's a good practice because I guess when he said that, I'm thinking I saw on a television show once that if a chef wants to work for uh, Gordon Ramsay, he makes him cook an omelet. If you can cook an omelet the right, the right way, what? he'll think about hiring you. Really? And most of them fail. The standards must be pretty high. Right. Gordon Ramsay, yeah, he's got high standards. For yeah. for omelets. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, the idea got, of, first of all, it's got to be gourmet. Yeah. The idea of having a kind of a omelets. quiz for a tech perspective right. uh, employee, why don't, why don't we do that? Yeah, it's a good hey, idea. I, I love the dialogue so far. Thank you very much for your... Um, your, your total transparency. Uh, 
let's kind of bring this to a conclusion. What's going on? What's the future? Oh, by the way, Bosch is celebrating how many years in business? Oh, I don't remember the number. It's over 100, that how much I know. Yeah, I know. I remember Bob telling yeah. me last week, and, and I, a big anniversary coming up. How do you see the, the aftermarket progressing? We had a group in here a little earlier that said they've never seen more good training. They've never seen more engagement. Um, but we continue to see the same people in the class. Do you, do you see the same thing? Yeah, it does happen because I travel around the country. Sure. So everywhere I go, it's the same faces. They shake my hand. They give me a big hug. They're glad to see me. Yeah. But rarely do you see the new young kid coming in. Sometimes the same guys are top level guys because they like coming. But yeah, but what you know, are we going to do about that? I think part of it's just like he was saying. You know, we have got to take it to a shorter class. You know, if you're going to do an on a class in hands where you bring the technicians in, it can't be you know eight, nine, ten hours. It's got to be two hours. You know, it's got to be short. If you're going to do it online, it's got to be a subject with a title that they're excited. Uh, yeah. You know, the fundamentals of elect- electronics or the fundamentals of a computer. It has to have nice, good catchphrases that bring them in. And you got to have not necessarily a handout paper, but maybe a handout that you give to them electronically that tells them everything they learned and gives them more than what they would have learned in the class. Here's a neat new idea. It just came to me. What about having a two-hour uh, leader-led class that you're in front of them? But in order to complete the class, do the assessment, get their, if you will, CEU, uh, CEU or, their, uh, or their certificate, they have to do an hour online as a combination. That could work. I think you probably want to take it to maybe 30 minutes online. Okay, fine. Yeah, Whatever sure. the number is, but it's yeah. a combination. You came here. Here's the password. Go on. This, this, it, it'll complete your training. And they pass because now you've conditioning them to the value of going home at, you know, at 930 at night, the kids are to bed and, and to watch this to complete their course. Yeah. The future, Kev, what's going on? I think it's really quite bright again still. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're working hard to, to push, you know, new products and new services out again. You know, we're, we're highly focused on, on, on servicing the industry, obviously. As far as the training goes, you know, we talked about, we talked about the online component. I just wanted to also point out that I think events, events like this are, are, invaluable as well because i think the camaraderie that comes out from getting technicians together like this and having them share you know the occasional war story or you know what i mean the business card exchange that comes from something like this Mm -hmm. is extremely important as well i mean i'm i'm 52 i've been in this industry for about 30 years and you know worked in a number of shops and I, i was out most saturdays getting trained and you just don't see that anymore and I think it's probably because the, the, the time guys have to spend. And I don't really know what happened in the world where guys don't have the Saturdays to spend anymore, but it, it's clearly, it's clear that they don't. You well, know, it's, th- that's the time. The time stresses on people's yeah. lives have clearly changed. It has, but yet, and I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the beginning of the show, what, but Bob Cat- Pattengale said last week in our town hall Academy was he made the commitment to become a professional. At, at whatever job he had, and he went out and got the education himself to move him through. Yeah. Don't think you're in a dead-end shop, you, you know, if, if the owner won't pay for training, doesn't g- give a damn about, you know, where his business is headed, then go out and get your own because there's going to be a ton of shops that are dealing with the technician shortage that want a person like you who's made that right. commitment. Now I see that from you. I see that commitment. Now I'm willing to invest in you. Because right. because you, you said, hey, I'm done not knowing. Now I need to know. I need to go to these classes. So you spend, you, you buy one less tool and you right. buy one, one more training class and you show your own personal commitment. Yeah. But I, when, I see, when I see the money that, uh, again, I'm a, a CarQuest, Whirlpack, Bosch, Autologic, when I see the money that we're investing in building these, these training classes and, and pushing them out there, sure. there is no shortage of great training available out there. Absolutely. And that's for sure. Right. Absolutely. Exactly. I'll give you the last word, Matt. You're a working technician, shop manager, diagnostician. The shops come to you to solve their problems. You've got a great rep, so does the shop you work for. Yet, you're at the AES booth. You go out and you train people. people. Companies fly you all over the place. So here, you know, the, the great story, the evolution of, you know, someone who probably put a wrench in your hand when you were nine years old. And now look what you're doing. So you, you've got a really diverse cr- career. Yeah. Can, can other people do what you're doing right now? Oh, they'd probably do better. Some of it's right place at the right time, too. Knowing the right people that I met networking at events like this. And uh, that probably led to it. But, yeah, growing up on a farm, having a grandfather and father that owned a farm implement dealership, 
and being around the repairing of things, uh, I think contributed greatly. So when did you drive your first high lift or tractor? <laughs> uh, my grandpa had me on a forklift. I was seven. Seven. Oh, earlier. I than couldn't me. hit the brakes. <laughs> I was eleven because I couldn't hit the brakes either. Yeah, I had to use the forks to drop them to stop it. But I have me on there. Uh, I have some very similar stories. In yeah. fact, I, I I was driving a tractor and I uh, the tree fell on me and I I broke my arm. I'll never forget that. I was in seven. I was in seventh grade. So yeah, I was I was driving mechanical things when I was a young un too. It's it's amazing how uh, you you hear people's histories and and they're, they're so diverse. It's like oh my God, look at look at look at how you got here. Look, look back in all those years. Well, hey, it was great. Thanks for being here. Uh, I learned a lot. Thank Thanks you. for your contributions. Uh, Steve Zack, Automotive Technical Instructor from Bosch. Kevin Fitz Fitzpatrick, Vice President of Autologic Diagnostics. And Matt Fonslow, Diagnostician. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.